Hey YouTube, welcome back. Uh, I thought today I'd take this opportunity to just have a little fun and uh, go through some of uh, my favorite guns that I personally own. Uh, I figured I'd split this up into handguns and rifles. So uh, stay tuned and let's take a look. start out with everyone's favorite gun, the 1911. So this particular example is a Remington Rand 1911A1 produced in 1945. It is uh, in its original condition. Had this one uh, for quite a while. Uh, I mean, 1911s are all pretty much alike. Funnest gun to own, but um, not nothing really that unusual from this one to a cult or any of the other makers. I believe Remington Rand was a typewriter maker when they were tapped uh, in World War II to start making these. Next I have a World War I era Colt Double Action 45. Uh, these would take the 45 ACP uh, in a moon clip as well as the rimmed. This particular one has its original grips but um, unfortunately Underneath here, the um, serial number, uh, had been, or not the serial number, I mean the, the U.S. property stamp has been worn off, but otherwise it's in pretty good condition. The photographs here are of with um, another one that was refurbished uh, in San Antonio for World War II, uh, but it does not have original grips, it has uh, rosewood grips added to it. Next we have a Beretta model of 1951. Um, this is my personal favorite Beretta. Uh, I was always a, a pretty big fan of the Helwan, um, which you can see is very similar. Uh, this is what's left of my Helwan, which I sold mostly for parts. Usually what happens is that the, um, I forget what it's called in here that guides it, uh, all these brakes. I replaced it multiple times it it always breaks but the Berettas um, have a slightly different design in there uh, I believe it's the locking lug is what it is uh, is the exact piece that rides up and down in the hell one it's held in by a screw which always eventually breaks but um, th these ones I, I, I've always liked I actually just recently got this when classic I believe had their sale maybe six or eight months ago Next I have a Mark II Enfield Revolver. This is a British World War II era revolver. This one is stamped for 1937 and it has a RAF, Royal Air Force, stamp on it. Um, a lot of these have the uh, snubbed uh, hammerless, but this one has the hammer. This is the original configuration pre-war and the later ones also have the, uh, I believe it's Bakelite grips with a protrusion on this side to help with the grip um, because those were of course double action only uh, whereas this one is single action uh, and also double action these are one of my favorite revolvers I actually own a, a number of these uh, Enfield revolvers but uh, I believe I only have two with the actual hammer uh, still on them next we have this no it is not a, another 1911 this is a Ballister Molina you will notice that it is a 1911 with the added uh, thing that everybody wants, no uh, grip safety there, just has the uh, traditional thumb safety. So these were made by Argentina and they were made, uh, I believe, starting after the Sistema cults, um, but also in uh, at the same time. They do not really interchange parts, I believe, they will use, the, they will use uh, 1911 magazines, but, uh, and I think the barrels are interchangeable, but n none of the other parts are, even though they are more or less basically um, the exact same gun. You can see it even has the same crossbar for disassembly and everything. But you may notice uh, I'm a little bit of a 1911 fanboy, so of course the sec uh, one of the my top five favorite handguns that I own is basically another 1911. So that was my uh, top five favorite handguns that I own. Now let's move on to the rifles. 
This is what is called a standard model Mauser or a banner Mauser. It's called banner because it has the banner stamped into the chamber here. These are incredibly beautiful guns, really well made. They were made in the interwar period, so between World War I and World War II, where Germany had a lot of strict um, controls on how many weapons they could produce, so they would produce some for like, oh, our mailmen need some, oh, yeah, we need some more. So a lot of them got um, sold to the to Franco regime in the Spanish Civil War. Uh, supposedly this one, is one of those. I'm, I've never really been able to verify exactly why. Whenever I show people this, they, they say that. But um, anyway, it's an incredibly beautiful rifle. Very well made. Pretty fun to shoot, although I've only shot it a few times. But, um, yep. What can you say about a Mauser? Next I have this uh, 9130 PU sniper, Russian sniper rifle. Um, obviously uh, you can't make a YouTube video about uh, rifles without including uh, one of these, or at least if you're doing milserps, right? Uh, so this, this particular one um, is a Molot import. Uh, I don't know if that debate on whether or not these were completely original or simply um, put together from original parts, but these are generally considered to be World War II period correct uh, for the most part. This one has been renumbered to its scope so that that's there as well as the import mark and, and the Molot mark of course but other than that a pretty cool looking example. It's a little beat up but um, works just fine. I have fired this I believe out to 600 yards. I used to shoot it quite a bit at 300. Um, anything beyond that is, is pushing it quite a bit with with the optics even even that is a little far, but uh, you know, most of the got is most of the got. Next uh, is this M1 Garand, which uh, I, I uh, have had many, many Garands. I even had a Tanker Garand at one point. They're super fun to shoot. Um, it's a it's a big round. It has a bit of kick, but the rifle itself is heavy enough that it's not really that much of a deal. Uh, the the gas chamber takes a lot of the recoil as well. Um, just a really fun gun to shoot if you're like with someone who hasn't really shot a big rifle before. It's maybe a, a good kind of cool one to show them. I mean, everyone wants to shoot a Garand anyway. <coughs> this particular one, this particular one has a refurbishment mark on it for 1952, so it was refurbished for um, the Korean War. The receiver is dated 1945 and the barrel is dated 1952, so that's you can see that that was replaced then, obviously. Um, this rifle has a little bit of sentimentality for me. Um, my wife bought this for me on my the first birthday that I had after we had been married, so a cool, a cool gift. Next we have this number four Mark I. Um, this particular rifle I've actually had for a very long time, maybe even more than a decade already. Um, this is a Savage, uh, so that's an, an American-made um, British rifle. The interesting one, thing about this particular one is that it has this flip sight, which is actually um, S-marked, uh, or all the parts are S-marked for Savage, so uh, it, would, it would appear to be completely original at first, but it also has um, the little U with an arrow in it for the South African forces. And as far as I understand, the, uh, they were all refurbished, they were all later, uh, so they went through refurbishment, and these sites would have been updated, so I don't know, as if, when I've uh, shown this to other people, they've um, expressed an opinion similar to mine, that this must have been added maybe by another collector afterwards, that this doesn't seem quite correct, so it's um, original in parts, but probably not original to its history, so a kind of interesting rifle in that. Um, the number four is one of my favorite rifles. Uh, the second rifle I ever bought was a number four, and I believe it was this one, in fact. Um, so I've, I've always had a fascination for these British rifles. So that leads us up to this guy here. This is a VZ-2008, um, the CIA, what is it, the Sentry Arms, yes, whatever their thing is called, 
um, 2008 version of the VZ58. I, I really, really like these. Um, I've actually owned several VZ um, variants. I had a VZ58 once and I let it go, which was uh, one of the biggest mistakes I ever made. Um, I honestly think they shoot much better than an SKS or an AK. Um, I, I, I really like it. So, and then finally, um, I decided to include this uh, as a model 1897 shotgun. This one is actually an IAC, so one of the um, Chinese clones. Uh, this is one of my favorite shotguns. Um, nothing super special, I think they just look really cool. Uh, I have owned a few 18, 1897 actual Winchesters. Usually they're, for uh, the prices I've been able to get them, pretty worn out and eventually I just decided this this was easier. For the um, purposes of someone who's just having fun with it, it's, it's totally been worth it for me. Um, so there you go. So that was my uh, video of my top five uh, handguns and rifles and one shotgun. Uh, that I own. I hope to do some more videos in the future, getting a little bit more in depth uh, on the history of these objects, as well as maybe some more uh, bayonets, other accessories. So go ahead and uh, like, subscribe, and uh, we'll make some more videos and see you guys later. I like guns.